Hi there, I am Terry Parker Brown, Terry Parker Brown VO, and I am excited to read from this children's book. It's called Aunt Martha's Corner Cupboard, and it is by Mary and Elizabeth Kirby. Chapter One The Corner Cupboard. I am afraid that Charlie and Richard Knight gave their master a great deal of trouble. The school they went to had just broken up for the Christmas holidays, and neither of them had won a prize. Indeed, they were never likely to do so, judging from the way in which they went on. They were good-tempered lads and favorites with their playmates. If they had a cake sent them from home, they always shared it with the rest of the school, and they were first and foremost at every game that was played. Their blue eyes were always twinkling with fun, and if they had been sent to Mitch, and if they had been sent to Mr. Birch's academy merely to enjoy themselves, it would have been all very well. But it is of no use mincing the matter. They were the most idle lads in the school. Nobody could make them learn their lessons, not even Mr. Birch, though he was very strict, and now and then gave them a caning. It was a pity they were so idle. Their father was a learned man and wished them to follow in his steps. It made him very unhappy when they came home without a prize, and it, and always by the next post a long letter from the schoolmaster to complain that he could not make them work. Their mother tried to excuse them and said it was time enough yet, but their father was of another opinion. Now that Richard had turned twelve, and he used to shake his head and look very sad. This cold, snowy Christmas, the boys were not going home. It was a promise that they should spend the holidays with their Aunt Martha, and her old-fashioned carriage was at the door to take them. They had not the least objection, for they were fond of Aunt Martha, as indeed was everybody that had ever seen her. She lived in a house with gable ends, just as you turn into the village. It was a very old house, and was said to have been built in the reign of King John. It was quite covered with ivy, and there was a large garden, but the snow had hidden everything in it. The rooms were large, but very low. The one that Aunt Martha liked the best had the morning sun upon it, and looked into the garden. And here she had her work table and her basket of knitting, for her eyes were not very good now she was getting old. And here she sat all the day long. Close by her was her corner cupboard that she kept locked up, and the key was on a bunch that she carried in her pocket. She never left her cupboard open because it had so many things in it. The boys knew the cupboard by heart. Out of it came sweet cakes and honey and sugar and tops and marbles and all the things they liked. And there were no tiresome spelling books or grammars or anything of the kind to plague them. But you must not suppose that Aunt Martha was an ignorant lady. Far from it. She knew a great many things indeed, and she did not like the thought that her dear little nephew should grow up to be dunces, which was most likely to be the case. Of course, she did not presume to think she could teach them so well as Mr. Birch, who understood Latin and Greek and had kept a school twenty years. But she had a scheme in her head to teach them something. Not that she intended them to learn lessons in the holidays. That would have been extremely unkind. The knowledge she meant to give them was not to be found in their lesson books, thumbed and dog-eared as they were, for an idle boy can wear his book can wear his book out without using it. No, the lore she was thinking about was contained close by, in her corner cupboard. It seemed to Aunt Martha, for she was a lady of lively imagination, as if everything in that cupboard, her china, her tea, her coffee, her sugar, even her needle, had a story to tell, and a most entertaining one, too. Had not many of the things been in foreign parts, where are great palm trees and monkeys and black men and lions and tigers? And if they had not been abroad, 
they were sure to have something to relate that the boys had never heard of. The boys loved to hear stories told them. There was a time just when it got dusk, before the lamp was lighted or the tea and plum cake brought in. Charlie and Richard would have played all day long and pelted each other with snowballs and made slides on the pond and scampered up and down the lane till their legs, young as they were, began to feel tired. And then it was nice to sit on the hearth rug before the fire and hear Aunt Martha tell a tale. Now, Aunt Martha had prepared a great many tales and had them, so to say, at her finger ends. She had not to make them up as she went on, or that would have spoiled everything. Indeed, I almost think she had learned them by heart. She hoped that when her dear little boys had heard all the curious things she was about to relate, it would make them want to read for themselves. For themselves. Charlie and Richard had no idea of the trouble their good aunt was taking on their account, and they did just as they had always done. They trundled their hoops and threw snowballs and scampered about to their heart's content. And when at last their legs began to ache, good old Sally, who had lived with Aunt Martha for nearly 30 years, fetched them in, took off their wet boots and put on dry ones, and brushed their hair and washed their faces and sent them into the parlor to their aunt. She'll have a story to tell, I warrant, that old Sally, who was little in the secret. Now, everything happened just as it ought to do. The boys wanted a story as much as ever, but, like the rest of the world, they wished for something new. They were thoroughly acquainted with Jack the Giant Killer, and entertaining as he had once been, they were by this time a little tired of him. They knew Cinderella and Little Red Riding Hood by heart, and they did not want to hear them over again. Not that they could get really tired of such delightful stories, but they might lie by, Charlie said, one for Christmas, and something else come out. Aunt Martha was quite willing, indeed. This was just what she had been planning for. Her dear old face brightened up and looked as pleased as could be when Charlie settled himself on the rug and Richard brought a stool and sat close by, their merry blue eyes fixed intently upon her. Then, Aunt Martha began to relate her first story, the story of a teacup. That's the end of chapter one. I'll be back with chapter two someday very soon. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed it.